Hi guys, it's Ashley here. I wanted to, before we really get going next week with Country Heat, I wanted to kind of go over everything with you. And we get all of this stuff in our books, but we sometimes we don't always actually take the time to go and look through it. So with everything that came in your challenge pack, and this goes the same whether you're doing Country Heat or 21 Day Fix or anything else, you get a whole bunch of different materials in there to help you from start to finish. So the first thing that I want you guys to look at, and I'm going to share my screen with you so that you can see everything, is you get this calendar. And you know you can take this calendar and you can print it out and put hang it up on your wall. And that way you can go through, it see it tells you the different um, programs or different routines you're gonna do every day. You get that glorious rest day on Sunday. And you can print out a copy and you can just mark off your days. If you're anything like me, being able to put that red X over a day and show that you've actually accomplished it is really one of those good motivators. So go through your calendar, that way you know exactly what routine you're gonna be doing every day. If you got the upgrade, then you'll notice that some days you'll have two. and I actually did the dance conditioning yesterday, and it's more of a traditional workout. It has a lot of the moves in it that you will be doing throughout, like the country swing and giddy up and all that kind of stuff. But it also has um, some like push ups and planks and that kind of thing as well. So it's really good just to kind of mix in some, you know, basic fitness and everything. So let's get out of that. And I want to take you to the eating plan. Now this is where I really want you guys to focus and really pay attention because this is what can hold us back sometimes. Because a lot of times we think, hey, we're getting our workouts in every day. You know, we are doing great. But then we're like, why am I not seeing anything? Why am I not feeling a difference? Why is it not working? And it's because we're not doing the other part of you know the program we're not following through with our nutrition you know they say abs are made in the kitchen and that is so absolutely true um if you don't have your meal plan and nutrition nutrition on point then you are not going to succeed and you're not going to see the results that you want to see so this is our meal plan for country heat and i really want you guys to try and stick to this as you know 100 percent if you if this is your first challenge if you are brand new to this i want you to follow this to the letter i don't want you to deviate i don't want you to go off of it because i want you to get your head in that mindset that you know you can do this and that you you know, you can succeed if you start you know in the very beginning if you start cheating and you start um, modifying here and there, then you're just, you're not going to really get into that routine and you're going to tend to struggle more because you're going to be so used to those cheats and that struggle that it's going to make it more difficult for you. So for this first challenge, I want you to really, you know, commit a hundred percent to your nutrition. If it's not on the list, I would say, don't eat it. Don't go for it. Follow this to the letter. And that is where you're going to see your amazing results. So. Let's scroll down. Oh, I did that one today. Um, getting started gives you all of your table of contents. And like I said, a lot of people get this stuff and they just set it aside and they don't even look at it. And they're kind of like, where do I go? What do I do? So, okay. And then we, again, we're using the the um, container food groups like we do like we did in Twenty One Day Fix. For those of you who are familiar, and if you're not, don't worry. It explains everything in here. You know what the colors are, what they're used for, how you fill them, and all of that kind of stuff. You should have all gotten a container set with your challenge pack. And here are the basic breakdown. Green is going to be for your veggies. Purple for your fruit. Red is going to be your proteins. Yellow is going to be for your carbs. Blue is your healthy fats. And for those of you who aren't sure what your healthy fats are, those are things like um, avocado and like goat cheese and different other for different cheeses and healthy oils and stuff like that. Those are going to be your blue containers. Nuts, almonds. Um, things like that. Those are going to go in your blue container. And then you have your orange container for your seeds and dressings. 
So this is where I got, I want you guys to pay attention. Okay. With the container system, we don't focus on counting calories. You know, that is something that was what we did with my fitness pal. And that's what we did. You know, Weight Watchers, we did points. We don't do any of that kind of stuff. We're not going to sit there all day and, you know, try and figure out how many calories a piece of bread is or how many calories there is, is in a green apple. We don't do that anymore. So what I want you to do is I want you to fill this out. And I'm going to fill it out with you real quick just so you guys will see what I'm talking about. So first, we're going to do weight. I'm going to enter 145 in here. We're going to time, multiply that times 11. Okay, so I'm going to put 145 right here. I'm going to put 1595 for my caloric baseline. Then we're going to add 300 calories to that. And that is going to be your average burn that you're going to get from your workouts. So add 300. So you put your caloric baseline, that number that was right here. You're going to put that right here. Oh, where did my calculator go? Okay, here we go. Then we're going to add the 300 to it, and we're going to put that 1895. Well, that's my number that I'm going to put there. Your number will be different. Okay, so now we're going to take that 1895, and we're going to do our calorie deficit. So because that 1895, that's our maintenance calories. So we're going to take that number. We're going to subtract the 750, and our calorie tick target, or my calorie target, is 1145. Now, I will tell you that you never want to go under 1200 calories, but like I said, we are not counting calories here. So, keep scrolling down. Here is our calorie plan. Now, mine was 11, remember, and I'm going to bump that up to 12 because you never want to go under 1,200. So I'm going to be in this 1,200 to 1,499 calorie plan. I'm going to be in plan A, and that's going to give me three veggie three of the green containers a day, two fruits, four proteins, two carbs, one healthy fat, and one cedar dressing, and then two teaspoons. Now, the teaspoons are oils and nut butters. So for those of you, like myself, who are peanut butter fanatics, Yes, you're going to have to cut back. A teaspoon is a lot different than taking that big giant tablespoon and dipping it in your peanut butter jar and going to town. So be careful of that. But this is going to give you your container rations every day. So follow, fill out that plan that we or the calculations that we just did above and go and find your corresponding plan. So that gives you our... And here, if you keep scrolling through your book, and this is on, I'm, um, I'm just showing this to you on demand because it was easier than actually holding the book in front of here and showing it to you guys. But this is all in your books that you got um, with your program. And here are some sample sheets. So you can print these out, and that way you can keep track. Um, you can do an Excel spreadsheet on your computer if you want to do it that way. They have those nifty jelly um bracelets that people wear they can do it that you know they move from one color to one arm to the other arm and that you know tells them their thing but it's super simple you print it out so for breakfast today I had um, it's the same every day for me I have my vegan chocolate with a half a banana and sometimes I'll put in a teaspoon of peanut, of peanut butter so today I have for meal one I would have checked off one of my proteins and one of my fruits and I didn't have the peanut butter today, so I still get those later on. But I would have checked those on. And basically, you just check off until you reach, you max out your containers for the day. Just keep on scrolling, keep on scrolling. See, and you can download all of these off of On Demand. And they're actually, they're really easy to make. It's just really whatever works for you. So... Let's talk about the container food groups. One thing to, to realize is that this is um, a list that they have compiled. Like I said, I'd really, really like it if we could all just stick to the foods on the list this first round, just because if this is your first challenge group, if this is your first time, I want you to get the maximum results. I want you to truly give this 100% everything you got. So the foods on the list are going to be 
listed in the most nutritionally beneficial at the very top, and then the least amount of nutrients at the bottom. That doesn't mean you can't eat the list of those foods at the bottom. It just breaks it down for you and gives you an idea. Um, some, some of the foods on the list have specific measurements, um, kind of like my banana. A banana, you only get half of a large banana. That does you can't go and take your purple container and mash up the whole banana, you know, with bananas and stick them in there and eat like three of them at once. You have to go and you can only have a half of one. That is one can be one purple serving. Here they give an example of 10 asparagus spears. But if there's no amount, specific amount listed, then if it fits, you can have it. Um, Another thing that people, and it's actually quite strange um, to think about it, is people are like, oh my goodness, I can't eat all this food. I, I, there's no way I can eat all of this. And that's why we have the little containers and, you know, we have everything portioned out, is to have smaller meals throughout the day. And you really want to make sure that your body is getting the nutrients it needs. So while it might seem like a lot of food, it's really what you should be eating. And I... You find so many times that before, I know before I started, I wasn't eating the right foods. And I wasn't eating as much food, but the stuff that I was eating, it was not good for me. It was filled, it was, you know, processed and, you know, greasy and just terrible for my body. So I would eat less because I was eating all of this garbage and my body felt terrible. And now that I'm actually eating more, I feel great and your body gets used to it, but I was, I'm, I'm not eating. Yes, I'm eating more, but it's more of the right kinds of foods. It's the foods that are fueling my body and that my body needs to actually process. So let's keep going. I don't know about you guys, but I love keeping my chicken up in my little red container. Okay. And you really will get used to the container system. You will realize that um, for all of you that if you don't, if you for some reason you don't have enough or you run or your container's dirty, you can, re <laughs> my daughters are watching in, um, a green measures out to about a cup. So does the purple. They're the same. The proteins, the reds, are three quarters of a cup. The um, carbs are a half a cup. Your blue containers are a quarter of a cup, and I believe the seeds and dressings are like two tablespoons or a tablespoon. And then your teaspoons, teaspoon. So let's keep going down. So here's our green container. And like I said, it's got the most nutrient dense at the top. So kale is going to be have the most beneficial stuff for you. Um, it goes down. Here's the ten asparagus spears, the two beets, or two medium beet sized beets, um, and it, it goes through all the different things. And one thing that I didn't realize when I started this is squash. I always thought of like your butternut squash or your acorn squash. I always thought of that kind of as a carb because it was, you know, it's kind of sweeter and it just doesn't feel like a green vegetable, but it treats it as a vegetable, as a green container. So your winter squash, that butternut, that is actually a vegetable. Okay, keep going down. So these are all of our vegetables. We're gonna get to our fruits. And like I said, you can really just go through these and make yourself a list. I'm gonna, Here's our grapes. I would be very careful of your grapes. Um, probably one of the better things to do is, I like to freeze my grapes, but measure them out first. Don't just get the bag and eat them out, eat them out of the bag, because you'll wind up way overeating that way. Measure everything out that you can. That way you know that you're going to stay on track. Here is your meat and your proteins. And my favorite one on here, I'm, a lot of these things that I, I just can't eat. Um, I don't think I've ever had goat or squab. Um, definitely can't eat sardines. 
Um, but I love lean ground chicken and turkey. Um, I actually don't use the red meat anymore. I use, last night we had Taco Tuesday. So I used lean ground turkey for the meat and I make hamburgers out of the ground turkey. Um, ground chicken is really great for hamburgers and you can throw some spinach in it with some feta and you've got like green and red and blue all melding together and it's really quite awesome. Greek yogurt. I love, love, love plain Greek yogurt. I will take it, I'll add some seeds and maybe a little drizzle of honey, put some yogurt on it, and I've got protein, you know, protein and fruit all there together, and it's one of my favorite snacks. Hello. Go. Okay, we're getting down to our carbs, our yellows. Quinoa is a really good um, yellow container food to make in bulk in advance and stick it in their freeze in their refrigerator, and then you can take it out and you can serve it cold and you can mix things like tomato and peppers and all that kinds of maybe some lemon juice or feta and mix things in it to make it like a cold salad, and that is. So that's a really, really good one that I like. Um, love the sweet potatoes. I get the little bags of sweet potatoes you put in the microwave from Publix, and I can use them, and I cut them up, and those are great. We love our oatmeal. I'm a fan of the overnight oats, so we'll take them and add the fruit and almond milk and let them soak overnight, and then it's like this cold, creamy deliciousness. Look, you even get tortillas on the, on the plan. Love me some Mexican food. All right, here is our blue containers that I was telling you about. We're coming down. So, oh, that was the one that I couldn't think of, the hummus. A blue container of hummus with, oh, it's one of my favorites. All right, so we have our avocado mashed or a quarter of a medium. Um, almonds, cashews, peanuts, all these different nuts coconut um, hummus, you've got cheeses, yes, you're allowed to still have cheese, feta, goat, even cheddar for those Taco Tuesday nights. Oh, the queso, so good. So you've got your blue containers. So when we get done, I just want you guys to go and make you, you know, think of some of the things that you eat, because it's really not gonna change. You know, this isn't about, you know, leaving foods out. It's not about starving yourself or sacrificing. What it's about is just finding that right balance in your nutrition and finding a way to make it all work. So think, think of some of the things that you love. My kids love to tacos. So on Tuesdays we have tacos and we, you know, we use the ground turkey instead of the red meat. We use the whole wheat tortillas instead of the flour. Um, we add the veggies in it. You know, I measure out my cheese and I'm not going over and just adding, having a cheese taco. You know, the little adjustments like that, it makes a really big difference. And you'll realize that you're not making huge changes, but your body will start to feel the difference. You know, because... Here's our teaspoons and our nut butters. Um, Notice that when they do like the peanut butter, they're going to be, we're not going to be eating the peanut butter at, you know, the GIF. We're going to try and do the natural that doesn't have all the added sugar and all of that other stuff in it. Here are your substitutions. One thing that I will tell you, and if you look up Autumn Calabrese, she has an entire video about some of these things, and one of them is the unsweetened almond milk. And what she basically says is that there's so few calories in it, and because I use it in my, in my Shakeology every morning, she basically doesn't count it. Unless you're drinking gallons and gallons and gallons of it every single day, then you know, don't worry about it. If you drink that whole, stick, if you're drinking two cups of it in your smoothie every morning, then yes, you need to rethink what you're doing. But if you're just using a little bit, then really don't worry about it. But these up here, if you notice what it says, three times a week you can replace one of your yellow container portions with a beverage from the list below. Um, hey, and look at this right here, wine, four ounces. 
four ounces. It's, uh, this is probably one of the hardest ones for me to wrap my head around and do, but I'm, I'm here with you through this challenge. You know, we can do this together, but let's make sure we keep that on track. Normally if I pour, it's like pour, just a little bit more, just a little bit more, but we're gonna keep that on track. These are treats, and the same with the, with the you know, beverage as well ago. Three times a week, you're gonna place a yellow container with a treat. Um, so, and these are the different things. So like chocolate chips or chunks, or dark ones, they count as half of an orange container. Um, chocolate covered almonds, six pieces. Um, there's some recipes on, there's some cookies and stuff on here, and she actually gives you the recipes later on in the book. So see how she just, she swapped them out. And we don't wanna do this every day, it's only three times a week. Water, we want to make sure you're getting that water in every single day. So like we did the calculations a while earlier, let me clear this out. Let's see, 145. I'm gonna divide that by two. So it gives me 72.5. That is the number in ounces of water I should be drinking every single day. Find you a fancy cup, find you some kind of water bottle, however you have to do it. Make sure you're getting that water every day because that's going to you know, help the flush out the toxins and it's going to help your muscles and all of that kind of stuff. And if you're not a huge water fan, there are things that you can do to make your water taste amazing. I'm fine with just straight old tap water out of the water, it, out of the faucet. It does not bother me at all. But you can add all of the, look at the mix-ins that she gives you. Orange slices, strawberry, kiwi. You can add, you know, herbs and spices. She gives you a couple of um, recipes up here, like ice water with fresh mint leaves and a lime wedge. Um, oh, look, the giddy up. That's one of the workouts in here. Sparkling water with two lemon slices and half a teaspoon of grated ginger. It sounds like a giddy up. I think I might try this rosemary roundup. Ice water with watermelon cubes and a sprig of rosemary. Watermelon and rosemary sounds very intriguing. I think I might actually try that one. Maybe I'll get fancy in my water drinking this go around. Okay, so here is our tea. Because we all love our caffeine. So, uh, some of us just crave it. Some of us can't get rid of it. Um, one couple things to remember with your with your tea or your coffee, you know, get rid of that sugar. If you have to have sweetener, try to use um, stevia or some kind of natural sweetener. You know, get rid of the plain sugar. Get rid of all of the you know Splenda and sweet and low type things. Um, for me, I was never really a big coffee creamer. It was kind of easy for me to let that go. Ah, Campbell, my youngest is coming to say hello. Um, so I have, but I have a Verissimo, which is the Starbucks um, latte machine. So I always just use a little bit of almond milk in there. I heat it up, then I put my coffee in it with the stevia, and that works great for me. Um, there are people that have to have their coffee cream, their coffee cream every morning, and they just can't live without it. That one of the tricks that they. Um, use now is they take the their coffee and they use coconut oil and they put about a teaspoon of coconut oil with the coffee and you put it in a blender or an emulsifier and they blend it up and it becomes this frothy creamy goodness so it eliminates that need to have that um, coffee creamer in your stuff so here this talks about the sugar raw sugar honey molasses maple syrup or agave syrup you want to make sure that these fall within these categories only. Things to stay away from, that cream, the half and half, non-dairy stuff. That white refined sugar that we buy in five pound bags, you know, get rid of those artificial sweeteners. Um, when I first started, I was very sad because I dumped out all of my sugar-free Starbucks syrups because they just, they weren't beneficial and they weren't doing anything to help me and I needed to make a clean break. So I just dumped them and moved on. So let's keep going. Seasonings and condiments. These are great ways to spice up your food without having to add butter or, you know, all of this stuff. 
you know, mustard, you know, garlic, ginger, green onion. You can use fresh spices. All of those kinds of things you can use for on on your cooking with your chicken, you know, with any of your meats or your salads or veggies, roasted veggies. Just make things interesting and make them fun. I love the pure extracts. I add them in my Shakeology. Um, we just recently I tried peppermint in my chop, my vegan chocolate Shakeology, and I swear it tasted like a Girl Scout cookie. It was so good, and I absolutely loved it. And Autumn gives you some of her own recipes on page 36, so we're going to keep on scrolling. Um... Okay, so here is a sample. It's a three-day sample meal plan that Autumn has devised. And if you want to just not put any thought or any effort into it, you know, you can simply just make a list from this and just follow this. I mean, it's really quite good. She gives you, she gives you your breakfast, your snack, and she goes through all of these different things that you can have. Um, here's your lunch. You choose one. And she gives you the recipes for so many of these. It's such an easy thing to just follow just this list and, you know, it's what she would do. And this is what I mean about, you know, a lot of people, they get these books and they kind of put them to the side and they don't look through them and they don't realize the amazing resources that they have. And it's all right here laid out for you. And it's super, super easy to follow. Uh, I stopped my scroll. There we go. All right, here's the spices. And rubs for different things, Mediterranean, all-purpose, Smoky Southwest. And then we get into our containers. And one of the great things is, look, here's a mixed veggie stir-fry. She gives you the recipe and everything, and then she tells you the container equivalents. So this stir-fry, you're going to have one green container and one teaspoon. And she orders, she categorized this by the containers. So these are all going to be red. Here's your reds, hard-boiled eggs. And one thing to remember with your eggs is two large eggs is going to equal one red container. And I think it's four egg whites will equal a red container as well. Here's your scrambled eggs. I had scrambled eggs for lunch. Thanks, Francine. Your baked chicken breast. And see, she has this seasoning that she used on it. So there really are some amazing recipes here in the book. Oh, how did I get way up here? Okay, here's that popcorn mix that she showed us earlier for that treat. But just go through and look at the recipes. And now I usually do this on a Sunday and, you know, map out. Oh, those look really good. I map out my plan for the week. And, but there are going to be some days where you're going to be like, oh, I really don't want to eat what I put on my plan. And it's okay to deviate from that if you can stay within, you know, that, that frame. So I knew what containers that I had available for lunch today. And I changed it, but I just made sure I stayed within my containers. And I made sure that I, it was stuff that was readily available. And I try to keep a lot of the staples stocked in my refrigerator so that I always have those options for me. So here's the banana oatmeal cookies that she, was, that she talked about earlier. Yes, the kids love the cookies. Cookie. She even gives you some smoothie recipes in here. I found some chocolate chip cookies. So just take your time and go through and look at these things. There's homemade hot sauce. I love hot sauce. Hot sauce. 
that's awesome. Oh, here's some Southern Spice French toast with banana. Look, she gives you all of the containers it would go through. And this would be like a special Sunday treat that I would make for my kids. And I think I'm going to make them this weekend because those look really, really good. Yummy. Oh, here is some smoky baked beans. So just take your time, go through, um, go through the book and see everything that, oh, here's another great um, tool for you in, in the book. And it's, it compares the restaurant food and it gives you kind of a, um, an idea of how many containers you'd be eating out for like the lasagna, the pizza, sushi, sushi rolls. Oh, that's a good one for me. Sushi roll with fish and veggies, six pieces would be one yellow, one red and one green. Here's your soups. So these are all great tools. I want you to use these tools. I want you to really you know, put everything that you have into this program, everything that you have into this meal plan, and combine it all together. Get your workouts done every day. Find your why. Find why you're in here, why you started, you know, why you're, if you're new, if you're still going strong, find out, you know, your why might have changed. But always go back to that. When you're having that hard day, always go back and, you know, Remind yourself of why you started this journey, why you're here, and what you want, and what your goals are, and re and revisit them, and always figure out what you're doing. And you know, if you need help, reach out to your coach, whether it's me or Carmel or Shannon or Francie, whoever your coach may be. You know, in this, reach out to them and ask them for help if you're struggling. If you see someone struggling in the group, reach out to them and let them know that they have your support. If, you're, if you had a really awesome non-scale victory, like you made it an entire week, you didn't skip a workout, you didn't cheat on your meal plan, you know, shout it out. Be so proud of yourself because it's amazing. You know, that is an amazing accomplishment. You know, don't worry about what the scale says because I promise you, all of those non-scale victories that you have, those are going to be the ones that you are going to that are going to build you up and that are going to see you through to this through to the end. The scale is a number. It's a number that hinders us. But those non-scale victories, those little moments of success, those are treasures and I want you to treasure them. And I want you to treasure yourself and believe that you can do this because you can. So, that's all I wanted to share with you today. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you're going to take the time to go through your book and really get a handle on what we're going to be doing. And I can't wait to spend the next 30 days with you guys. For now, I'm going to go hit the shower because I'm still a little sweaty after country heat. Um, but I hope to see you guys soon. Bye now.